All right, let's bring in Tommy Curran and Burt Breer for this discussion. Guys, very quickly, I want to say this. We, of course, showed the most negative stuff there, Curran, from Bill Belichick. But I actually watched his evaluations of all the top quarterbacks, and I thought he was pretty fair across the board. Mm -hmm. Might have had a tinge of a little, eh, you're my ex-team. I might have a little bit more of a sourpuss tone in my analysis. But I actually felt like I don't feel like he was extra hard on Drake May. I think if he was going to go either way, he would probably overcorrect and be praising of what the Patriots did. I just think that's how he would operate. It's fair. I just, I've never heard Drake May say, I play like Josh Allen. Maybe he says he's a model for him. And what's interesting, too, and, and Ted Johnson mentioned this, I think the bill was a little dubious about the upside of Josh Allen for a while. I've said, and I told uh, Albert last night, please put a stake to the heart of the Josh Allen conversation <laughs> because he's not as big, he's not as fast, he's not as powerful, and his arm isn't really close to what Josh Allen's is. All that said, I thought Bill Belichick was fair to all the players. And if you're the third overall pick, then you deserve to be scrutinized. Bill did have him, Albert, as the fifth guy on his board right. that he had there with Pat McAfee. And, I, and Brian Hoyer, who's got real insight into this, told us he's hard on everybody, you know, and that's – it wasn't surprising for Hoyer, who played for him, what, two, three times, right? A couple, to, two, three. To hear these sorts of assessments. I, I liked it because I thought the tone and the cadence you got from Bill was very authentic. And I would agree with, with, with what Tom said, too, um, on the Josh Allen comparison and what Bill said there. I, like, the one thing that I had heard was the, the, references to, the, the references to Josh Allen with Drake May were either – Justin Herbert physically with a Josh Allen play style or Josh Allen, but a tick down in just about every category. And I know Tom used the word last night, and I think it's an apt one, unicorn. There aren't very many Josh Allens running around. Like guys who have that size, who have that speed, who have that running ability, who have that sort of arm strength and ability to throw off platform. Um, Josh Allen can do some things that I, I think no one else on the planet can do. He's he one can of also, one. He can also do some things that still make you scratch your head. Yep. And that existed as a Part rookie. Of the comp. That existed this past season when he led the NFL in interceptions. Mm -hmm. Josh Allen right now, I think, has backslid a bit. I'm not saying he's not a great player. I'm not saying that he's not going to be a perennial all-pro threat mm -hmm. and put up ridiculous numbers. But his default right now, as we saw kind of exacerbated and they had to make a move, was to just drift, drift, drift and try to find somebody on yep. the run and throw from the right sideline into tiny windows because he could. If Drake May wants to play like that, that's not healthy because he can't do exactly what Josh Allen can. All right, Bird. So we heard from Bill Belichick last night. He obviously is not in charge of a team this year. But if he was and if he was still with the Patriots and had the number three pick, I'm convinced he would have, like, traded back and taken, like, an interior lineman that no one had ever heard <laughs> of. But what would he have done in the draft this year if he was still with the Patriots? Well, because of his age and because, you know, the window, I think, is shorter for him, there's a, probably a good chance he would have traded back and taken J.J. JJ McCarthy. And I didn't see all the analysis, but it did seem – like he was a little higher on McCarthy. And the main thing is, it sounded like, you know, he thought McCarthy was more ready to play. And I do think that was part of the assessment with, with Mac Jones is that Bill Belichick's not going to be here for another 10 years. So who can get us up to a competitive level at the quarterback position fastest? And I think that's why the answer was Mac Jones. I think that's part of the reason why the Patriots viewed Mac Jones as the second best quarterback in that year's draft behind only Trevor Lawrence. If that was the approach, because you still have Bill Belichick as your coach, then yes, I think J.J. McCarthy would be more ready to play. To me, this is a pick that's more about five and ten years from mm -hmm. now than the next year or two. If it's about the next year or two, then I think J.J. McCarthy's more ready to roll out there. I agree with everything on, on, J, on what Albert said, Trendy. Just the fact that he's NFL ready and mm -hmm. the strengths of J.J. McCarthy right now are the strengths that Bill constantly talks about accuracy, understand what you're supposed to do in decision-making. So, Curran, did the Patriots make a mistake? When you look at what the Vikings did, they traded back and got J.J. McCarthy, and I believe they also got a uh, Ross Turner. Did they make a mistake? No. They, the, the Vikings have the right to go and do that because they have Justin Jefferson, who's probably one of the top three receivers in the league. You can stack them however you want. Mm -hmm. J.J. McCarthy can take advantage of that. For the Patriots, they are looking to three years down the road, perhaps, as to what Drake May will be. That's why all of these people are starting from zero together. They're all crossing the start line, mm -hmm. whether it's Alex Van Pelt, Ben McAdoo, uh, McCartney, Mayo, and Drake May. They're all starting the race together. How far does this race go? Or do they drop out before they hit the finish line? 
That's to be determined. But I don't think they made a mistake. They did what they thought was right for them. And Tom, you know what I think is fascinating about this is this is something we're going to be able to track going forward. One thing that emboldened the Vikings to draw a line in the sand as far as how far they were willing to go to trade up for Drake May, where it was at one point it was 11, 23, and next year's one with some pick swaps that favored the Vikings. The reason they draw the line in the sand there is because part of their equation was it's Drake May or it's J.J. McCarthy and this, 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 and this. So going forward, we're going to be able to really monitor this. We're going to be able to look at it and say, here's what the Patriots would have been able to get for, with, to go along with J.J. McCarthy. Mm -hmm. So you take these three or four players with McCarthy as a centerpiece versus May. That's, I think, how we're going to be weighing this going forward.